I'm Bob Reed. I'm with the U.S. Geological Survey based in Fort Collins, Colorado, and I work on the Invasive Reptiles Project. And basically our goals are to understand the distribution of invasive reptiles in the U.S. and its territories. And we've got people working in Guam on brown tree snakes, as well as Florida on uh, species like brown uh, Burmese pythons. And we've recently found out about records of banded water snakes here uh, north of Yuma in the lower Colorado River. And so we're trying to delineate that population, figure out where they're established, how many are there, and what are our options for control. And uh, if we can catch a species early before it spreads widely, then we might be able to slow down the rate of spread or possibly even eradicate them. So we're starting a project this week to delineate this population of banded water snakes. And we're working in the lower Colorado system, north of Yuma, Arizona. And we're deploying snake traps, about 150 this week. And then those traps will be checked daily for at least eight weeks, hopefully 10 weeks and we've got them spread in areas where we think the snakes are, as well as areas that we think might be outside the known range of the snakes. And so our goal is to figure out how widespread are they and how many can we capture. Uh, the banded water snake is native to the southeast US. They probably arrived here via the pet trade, and we're concerned about this species in the lower Colorado River because uh, it's a species that's larger than the native garter snakes. They have a very broad diet. They eat fish, frogs, small mammals, occasionally birds, occasionally other snakes. And so it's possible they could attain very high densities here and change the trophic structure of the lower Colorado River by introducing a new top predator. In some ways, we've actually pre-adapted this area to the invasion of banded water snakes because we already have many of its native prey species from the southeast U.S. We've got things like green sunfish and mosquito fish and largemouth bass and bullfrogs, many of which are introduced either for sport or um, in some cases for food. And so that increases the likelihood that a snake from the southeast U.S. is going to be able to succeed here simply because we've put most of its uh, original food here already. In that case, those introduced prey items can subsidize the snakes, help it get to higher densities, and then it can nibble away at the native species uh, as well.